Like, oh, well, like, yeah. I mean, if you just take Earth population against 21 million and or 17, right? 17.5 uh -huh. or whatever it really is because the other four are missing or something, right. you know? Mm -hmm. So so that being said, it's like, it's insanely scarce. Like more than any other precious thing that we could imagine, the way it's structured, right? So um, to own one, as we know, is just going to be one of those things that no one in the very soon, I think in the very near future, is going to have a whole Bitcoin, right? It's, uh, it's just... It's going to be those things where we're all working in Chitoshi and that's just the reality of it. So, um, and I can't wait to that time because I think that's real. That's where it is, yeah. um, where the power is truly at, right? Yeah. We, we can start using it. Right now, we're all holding it, right? So, um, the, the goal would be to to get to a point where uh, the masses are actually utilizing it, and then and then mm -hmm. we see. I think that's when we'll see the true power of it. Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Davani, the Total Connector. I'm super excited to announce my next talk, my next episode with Josh Lopez. He got in touch with me uh, via, you know, uh, LinkedIn or you know, direct message or something, and he got me in touch with Grant Romund, the founder and CEO of Ocean Builders. You know, who's also somehow in, in cooperating with Seasteading Institute and and in free private cities. You know, uh, so all these like real uh, existing uh, technological innovations that are taking place on, you know, when it comes to homing, housing, habitation. So without further ado, it's going to be a great talk. I mean, just alone, you know, the, the wording on his in his profile, it says great spirits have always found violent opposition from media cried. The latter cannot understand it when a man does not thoughtlessly submit to hereditary prejudices, but honestly and courageously uses his intelligence. Awesome. So from that moment on, I knew, you know, this guy gets it. He. He, 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 you know, he had read my short brainstorm article on my film project and my vision. So, and really excited. Let me know what you think. Uh, like it, retweet, share it, follow me, subscribe to the channel and to my podcast platform. Thank you so much for your support and for listening. Without further ado, this is my talk. And let me know if you have any questions. My email and DMs are open. Hello at thetotalconnector.com. And I'll talk to you soon. Have fun. We're live. Welcome to the show, Josh. Thank you for having me. Thanks for ha get, you know. Uh, thanks for you know uh, for getting me in touch with uh, with Grant because uh, I need to you know um, tell a little bit the background story. It's really fascinating because um, I put out that article, that short brainstorm article on the Frame Project, which I'm really glad now that you are, you and Grant, both of you, are in this group now. And uh, so you you got me in contact with Grant, and then I looked up your 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 background, you know, your profile on LinkedIn. I'm like, that's a really fascinating, you know, uh, profile, and and the, in, the you know the spectrum of interests you have, it's amazing. So, Josh Lopez, thanks so much for you know coming on my show, and uh, why don't you you know tell me or my listeners a little bit about yourself? Uh, you were just talking before we start recording. Uh, about Texas, because I heard from my girlfriend is like she she read something like about there's you know people are like really pissed off because so many people are emigrating or you're know, moving from California to to Texas. I by the way I grew up five years in California, Los Angeles, so maybe we have something in common <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, go ahead and uh, tell a little bit about yourself. Oh, wonderful. So. Yeah, I did, as you mentioned, move from Los Angeles to Austin, Texas, about 14 years ago. And there's a huge influx of Californians coming this way, right? And uh, there is a, 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 a stigma there as regards to uh, locals being like you're overrunning all of our clubs and bars and changing the culture and making it much. I mean, Austin's always been a very um, progressive, liberal type environment anywhere else than Texas, right? So Texas is... Uh, very red, and uh, Austin is blue, right? So um, if you align with those sorts of things, then Austin is a reasonable place for a Californian to be like, I'm going to Texas. I can buy uh, a, a ton of land and huge square footage of property for a fraction of what California real estate is going for, and then and then it's just easy to do. So you sell a house in California, and you can you can buy a ranch here, a mansion of a ranch, cash and still have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank right so that's um it's enticing <laughs> mm -hmm. so. 
Is, that's, is, that's why most of it. Okay. And is the reason Joe Rogan moved to, to Austin, is that for tax reasons, you think, or just because yeah, of the I, whole I didn't, atmosphere? I, I, mean, I, heard of, I definitely heard of Rogan coming this way. Um, there's just a lot of buzz here with Tesla getting one of their gigafactories going here now and um, Rogan coming this way. There's some high profile people already here. Uh, we have all the big players, Apple, Samsung, um, Hewlett Packard. Uh, it's just endless. It's, a, it's always been known for its tech. So for, for a very long time, Dell originated here. Um, you know, so, so all of this has been here for a long, long time. And um, it just keeps expanding. Uh, the land is inexpensive. So these corporations can set up, you know, acres of campus and provide these work live type environments with huge parks along the river and it's difficult to do that in other places so it's it's definitely something that's calling a lot of these these high profile people and companies to austin right mm -hmm. so, and our you know i'm benefiting from it <laughs> so <laughs> i got here 14 years ago and it's been boomtown ever since so um my real estate's doing just fine that's great yeah um, on your, you know, on your profile and your LinkedIn profile, it says here, I mean, a bunch of things. It's so, it's so fascinating <laughs> what you've done. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like you've also done multiple patent applications, uh, created hundreds of conceptual designs, business plans, owned and operate multiple businesses. Um, do you see like, because it's a, you know, it's a Bitcoin podcast show, um, what is your, I mean, what is your perspective? What is your understanding of Bitcoin when it comes, you know, to your ethos, to your, uh, you know, vision perspectives? Like, how can you, how can we like connect that to, to all that, you know, what you've been doing and, you know, the, the, the visions uh, and the, the, you know, the, the, what should I say? You know, the, uh, the ethos, you, you know, you, you live. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd probably go further back than some of your guests. Mine goes about 35 years ago um, to a schoolyard fight, right? So the bully scenario, I'm not getting bullied. Someone else is getting bullied. But it's, it's always been in my nature to um, try to bring justice and keep the peace, right? So um, I defended this child and I was of the smaller of all of them, right? And in that, I remember getting a feeling of like, you know what, people need to do this. Like we need to stand up to systems that are corrupt. And it started in a very simple scenario of just a, a, a bully environment where um, it did change the situation. The, the kid did see that what he was doing was wrong because it wasn't just a, a fight although it did get physical, there was discussion on like, why are you doing these things? Like what is going on in your head to want to cause trouble with this person, right? <clears throat> and <clears throat> I believe that I've always had that even at a very young age. So as we progress through that, um, as I would analyze systems for their fairness, right? And their efficiency. So efficiency as an inventor, as an engineer by design, um, I'm always analyzing things for and rethinking things to make them more efficient, right? It's just how I'm wired. And that bringing me through school <clears throat> and up into my interests, um, I really did a lot of that type of work, right? And it brought me to projects such as like the Venus Project, right? And uh, the Venus Project is a beautiful project. It has some components that uh, don't sit well, especially the economic models and things was like that, that, right? Was that, to to, was that mentioned in that Zeitgeist movie, right? The, the Venus Project? Yes, like, yes, yeah. okay. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's been uh, Jacques uh, Fresco has been 50 plus years. I mean, he's passed now, but mm -hmm. um, he was creating beautiful, sustainable structures and, and rethinking all the systems well before most and doing beautiful work, right? And that's always been fascinating to me. So in that, as I was in that space, I came across a Seasteading Institute, yeah. right? So in the Seasteading Institute, um, I aligned myself with them. And then they have a, a, a project that was adopting their methods. The Blue Frontiers was adopted, right? And 
we were working on getting floating cities in Tahiti, right? Mm -hmm. So the French Polynesian government had signed an um, MOU to have us come down there and we were ready to get it done, right? And then it got right in the middle of, after I think a year or so, got right in the middle of an election and the opposing party took it as um, an opportunity to bolster some support uh, with the locals because the locals were feeling like, you know, all these rich Europeans are coming down here again and they're going to steal our fishing grounds and take over our country. And, and you know, I can understand why they could feel that because historically it had happened, right? Mm. But this model was not that. And it was very plain that it was not that. We were going down there to stimulate their economy, try to empower them. There was a percentage that we were going to make allowed for them to live on the seasteads work on the seasteads, generate revenue around there. And it was the best we can possibly do to try to get this thing done. So in that, um, a good majority of them are libertarianist, right? So the Bitcoin is at the very fundamentals of their, their belief structures, I would say, if I was to put it that way. And uh, so that was really my first introduction. I had always, I've heard of it since its inception, right? But it seemed like another share or stock mm -hmm. to invest in. Yeah. Right? It wasn't yeah. like a thing. It was just, oh, yeah, that, I heard that's a good investment. So I was looking at it kind of like cannabis stocks. Yeah. Right? I was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, you invest in cannabis. It's a good thing. It had the buzzword, you know, and all this, all the supporting uh, technology around cannabis. I was like, Bitcoin's kind of like that, right? Like yeah. you support blockchain and, and these other coins. It's just so funny that it happens to so many like really bright people like, you know, that are like so hardcore into Bitcoin right now. They just they just dismissed it at the beginning, you know, because they didn't yeah. even take, take it seriously. They didn't read the white paper or I didn't, you know, I, I should have listened to Max Kaiser at the very beginning. I remember I remember yeah. talking. I remember him talking to to Alex Sean and said, buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? You know, like <laughs> I know, I know. And I, I, I found an email. Um, and it was uh, 20, 2010 that I sent to my buddy. I said, hey, we got to buy Bitcoin and we got to buy a bunch of cannabis stock. Neither of us did either of those things. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and we like, I look back on it and I said, you want me to do the math? And he's like, no, I don't want you to do the math. I said, yeah, it's, we would not be in the same place you are now. I mean, we're, we're talking multimillionaires. Uh, Let me ask you just one, one before I interrupt. I don't want to interrupt, you, but one, one question: no, When you, when you first encountered Bitcoin, or when you, let's say, more seriously, you know, uh, somehow took a look at it, did you understand the absolute scarcity of it? Like, did you get that? Because the I, I took me a long it? time. Yeah. Like, oh like, well, yeah. I mean, if you just take Earth population against twenty-one million and or seventeen, right, seventeen uh -huh. five or whatever it really is, because the other four are missing or something, right. you know, mm -hmm. so. So that being said, it's like, it's insanely scarce, like more than any other precious thing that we could imagine the way it's structured, right? So um, to own one, as we know, is just gonna be one of those things that no one in the very soon, I think in the very near future is going to have a whole Bitcoin, right? It's, uh, it's just, it's gonna be those things where we're all working in Chitoshi and that's just the reality of it. So, um, and I can't wait to that time because I think that's where, that's where it is, yeah. um, where the power is truly at. Right? Yeah, we, we can start using it right now. We're all holding it, right? So um, the, the goal would be to to get to a point where uh, the masses are actually utilizing it, and then and then mm -hmm. we see. I think that's when we'll see the true power of it. Josh, what is your vision? Like, you know, I've been trying like to communicate my vision and get you know get all these people together. You know, everybody, like each one of these, you know, beautiful minds and, and you know, souls that we have in this in this group, in this film group, they're all mostly Bitcoiners. You know, one of them is like super like talented in making animations. The other one, you know, what, written books, you know, probably like Kurt Smartholm or Yoni Appelberg doing the animations or other people like on economics, Austin economics, you know, like or Stephanie, like Fantastic understands, team, yeah. like, like amazing, yeah. like about central bank monetary, you know, I mean, the root causes of this whole shit that we are in. Like, I want to know, what is your vision? Like, how would you start a, a film? Because I don't want to make an ordinary documentary. I mean, it's not my sure. project. It's I see it as our project. And if I, if we can't do this like together, then I don't know, then I feel I failed somehow. But yeah. I really want to know, because, you know, people, you know, I'm, I'm a moron, you know, in a lot of things. But but on the other hand, you know, I think we shouldn't overestimate the intellectual because people, you know, are so 
entrenched in their daily you know lives with responsibility mm -hmm. jobs and brainwashing media indoctrination and i think this is going to be the challenge the first whatever 30 seconds five minutes 10 minutes the trailer i think this is yeah. where we're going to pick up the people and if we can't achieve that it's it's gone it's just going to be another documentary it's going to be watched by a fraction of a fraction of you know of the audience out there who is already by the way you know probably into bitcoin or economics or something like that but it's not going to be like the critical mass whatever that critical mass is whether it's going to be five million people ten million people or half a billion people this is what i want to know from you what is your vision okay so to go back to my story and how my exposure was and my mentality of thinking that it was just another investment right so people invest in what they can align with for the most part, it's either, okay, it's making a ton of money or somehow they morally align with it and they want to support it. So then they invest their monies. So if in the movie, in the film, or especially the trailer, if we can communicate <clears throat> to the masses, right, truly in some very unique way, communicate to them um, all of the things that they inherently despise, right? Like they just like this, this, and these are things that we all collectively don't agree with as regards to you know, government, economies, the basic, but we have to spin it to where we're not just complaining about these things, we're actually providing solution to it, right? And explaining those solutions in visual yeah. presentation, right? Yeah. So the first thing that came to my mind, and uh, I shared a few little videos that I had seen that communicated, but one was to produce the reverse of one very popular um, uh, animated piece that showed uh, a character walking through and like um it was it was personifying greed in the system and it showed him going through and like slaughtering baby seals and putting its 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 coat on and going through and dumping and trash and just building all this just destruction and greed across the whole landscape as he's navigating through all of these things and he's touching on all of these areas that are um, of significant concern, environmental concerns, economic concerns, right? Um, psychological concerns, you know, it, it was like um, a, a true sociopath, right? And how they would respond to every normal human situation with no emotion. Just like, it's money, baby, it's money. I don't give a shit what happens. I'm killing, I'm robbing, I'm raping, that's power, everything else is weakness, and, and that's it, right? So he, through the whole thing ends up on this mountain, everything's dead around it, it's just gone. And he's sitting up there on his, on his throne with everything dead, right? And um, I would like to see the reverse of that, and some of the things is, is daily use. I think that'd be very important to communicate, where someone is walking through these events of life and there's a video that I shared about that where you see them, you know, they're scanning and paying and, mm -hmm. and bartering and they're doing all the stuff that humans do on a day to day, but it's all Bitcoin based, right? Everything they do is, is done on it. So everything that we pay for and services, products, all of it, mm -hmm. we're using Bitcoin, right? And in a positive way, and then somehow communicate that uh, the, the, the impacts of that right? And the systems, not fighting the systems, but creating new systems, right? And making these other ones obsolete. So it, that's why they call it, you know, a, a silent battle or a peaceful battle and things to that effect, right? Is because you don't actually have to go into the street marching, rioting. You don't have to do any of those things. And that, that's really what um, appeals to me because I'm not one of those personalities. I don't want to, I don't, want to have to implement violence to try to bring peace yeah right i just want to outthink the other guy just like be smart about it be a master right and, and create master, something new right and create, create something, something new and, and it's there and now we have a beautiful new tool mm -hmm. and we need to utilize it and and uh as long as we communicate how to utilize that and 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 communicate to the, the masses that it is something that's um that can be used in that way and and will be used in that way because of where it's come from where it is now and then what it's going to be in like the next 10 years for sure I mean, if, if not two years really i have kind of a projection that's really only about two years out but um but for sure within 10 years
in, is my mind where it's just it, it's going to become a tipping point the scales i mean we look at starlink right and, and other satellite projects like that half the planet doesn't have access yeah right we're about to give the other half of the planet access exactly what is yeah. that going to look like yeah you know uh, as regards to all technologies and especially um digital currency because it's just easier to implement yeah and I, I i guarantee that is the path in which we're going for sure i'm really grateful that you express or articulate described exactly what i wanted you know <laughs> because um, oh, wonderful. no because you know how to like translate this vision into because this is it's going to be the challenge and I'm, I'm i'm you know i'm sure there's like really skilled and talented creative people out there with an let's say with an emotional imagination like capability how to touch people right and that's that's why i wanted you know because you said solution right so i said okay why don't we that like the very first scenes even if it's just the first 30 seconds like just give them a glimpse into the future you know not some again not some sci-fi you know like you know beyond utopian sci-fi thing that's maybe just too right. far away like thousand years i'm really talking about like technology that could be developed right now or right now you know, I just saw a picture, I think it was, um, um, I was quoted, uh, actually it was a quote from one of the articles of Safid and Amus, if you've read his book or, or some other article he cited. And it was actually from Brent Prentice, who is also in our group, who, you know, created okay. this, this website, what the fuck happened in 1971, you know, when they, yes, all, I just when saw they went, I exactly. Saw yes. And a lot of things, I mean, just, just look at the pictures and the data and the numbers it's just mind-boggling you know and when you see like the it's it's called something like um the world like record like the highest uh, world flight uh, speeds flight by, speeds right by yeah. airplanes and yeah, it really right. like stagnated like exactly starting from 1971 you know because mm -hmm. you know we had like concorde and all these you know supersonic uh airplanes and then all of a sudden everything like slowed down suppressed or whatever or or just you know it was it was it's not only time that has been stolen from us through this centralized monetary cartel system you know the, the central banks and governments but it's actually the technological innovation that's been stolen from us and this is i don't know why i'm so you know passionate about the technological innovation because i think this is the key bitcoin is the key to real freedom that we've never had we don't even know what freedom looks like you know no, so don't. what's your what's your take on that i mean you know would you would you say this <clears throat> is like if we can like give people you know a concrete vision a concrete you know visualization of what the future can literally look like you know, whatever, right, so three private cities with ocean builders, you know, with Grant Grumont building those pots mm -hmm. on land. On sea. I mean, it's amazing what kind of things are already possible, you know? Well, if we think about all the suppressed technologies over the last 120, 30 years, right? Um, maybe more um, that have set us off up to a path of just control. And that's what it seems to be always, right? How do we control this thing so that we can generate as much revenue off it, right? Um, planned obsolescence is, an, uh, is, is a, a key to an engineer's design, right? And they build it only so good so that the warranty runs out and then it breaks, right? So that is the mentality across the board, uh, everywhere. They're like, how do we get the most out of this thing, right? And um, if the technologies, it, advanced suppressed technologies are released, which, we have one now, Bitcoin, right? So that is one of those advanced technologies that if somehow suppressed early on, what we would look back and said, wow, we would have really went down a different path, right? All of humanity would have really went down a different path. And we can look at that with now it's becoming more buzzwords like Nikola Tesla, right? And his AC versus DC and where we went with that, that split of technology there, it changed the entire landscape of humanity. Like everything, literally, there's poles all over the place, ugly, nasty power poles and power all over the place where that may not have ever existed, right? I mean, that's incredible to think that if, if JP Morgan would have stuck with Tesla and kept that funding there and let Wardenclyffe Tower do what it was supposed to do and then scaled from there, the world would have been completely different. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, totally. And that's the same thing that's going on right now. We're at we're we're at we're at a, a, a pivotal point in humanity, and I believe Bitcoin is most definitely at the center of that, along with many other interesting technologies in AI and 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 things like that. So it's all yeah. it, it's all very exciting, very very exciting, and I'm. I think we're very privileged to be here right now yeah. to be able to experience it because well, we're all the, young enough to really see what it's going to do as we should all have at least 10 years in us. I'm hoping so, yeah, you yeah. know, um, I have conversations with my children about it all the time and w we as a family are very excited for, for all the good that's going to come from, from these types of technologies. Before I ask you the other question, um, what do you, what is your wife and your kids like? Uh, do, you, do you talk like about, about Bitcoin or what's their? Oh yeah, so um, my children have accounts. <laughs> I have them invest it. So like, so they understand it. They cool. watch it. They know it. You know, they 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 they're working on the dialogue. They could have a general conversation about it. I mean, they're 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 eight and ten years old, so it's not like they're high level breaking it down, but probably better than. Wow. Most, yeah. wow. <laughs> so, so, um, uh, I, you know, the wife is supportive of, of the whole thing. She loves that I get into projects and these type of projects are, are really geared to helping people. You mm -hmm. know, I, I am in a, I'm in a, currently I'm in a startup right now as well that has to do with, with developing, um, hollow chain technology to manage our intellectual property and and help monetize that so so that being said it's like the tech is there for all of us to use and and it's going to fast track and bring like in my particular experience it's going to bring a level of confidence to the masses that they can actually have a system that they can trust right right because that's one of the biggest reasons why a lot of things just don't happen because people are holding back because they just don't trust it if we have a, we have so, a serious trust issue in our society. Major, major, major you know, trust issue. On every right? level all of us collectively, of. right? Because yeah. we've all been burned to some level, yeah. right? Yeah. Somewhere, somehow, if it, if it's not a salesperson, um, it's a government, right? Mm -hmm. And they've all kind of learned from the mafia. <laughs> so, in my mentality, it's like the same model. It's this really uh, destructive model, and and um, they 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 front like they're there to help. And it's not fooling as many people as it used to. So yeah. um, I think it's, I think it's, uh, uh, you may have heard this, it, it, it's called the hundredth monkey. Mm -hmm. And it, the hundredth monkey, I feel is a, it's a real, real thing, especially as regards to Bitcoin. So there's something that will literally click like a switch that will go off almost biological. You know, we could say that it's, it's maybe just exposure through media or other means, right? Uh, word of mouth, whatever. But there is a tipping point. Yeah. And when that happens, mm -hmm. we're just going to see it, boom. It's just going to go. And, and there's think, not going to be any stopping. And do you think it's going to happen like much more unexpectedly than, than you know, like we, we you know, Parker Lewis with this article, series yeah. of articles gradually and suddenly. And just, yeah, just, I don't just, think that. Right? Yeah, and, you know, j just just because, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hess McCook, you know, the preacher of auto DCAing of Bitcoin, he said something like as a reply to a tweet, he said he'd rather have like, I don't know, millions or billions of people, uh, you know, um, auto accumulating Bitcoin or something like a, buying Bitcoin on a regular basis than, you know, a, a few hundred, you know, like Michael Saylors who have right. like nearly, you know, bought what whatever 450 of uh, half a billion dollars worth of bitcoin i mean and it's it's you know it's gaining traction say so something is happening you know behind the scenes some you know yeah i would say that we're going to see that spike probably well into like when when it's sitting at somewhere at 150,000 right so we're going to see yeah. this ridiculous like from here to that like bang right yeah. and then from there it will take the the probably the form of the other one to trickle towards a million right mm -hmm. it'll be more of a uh now People, it's it's being used at a different level. It's being understood at a different level. People are um, interacting within its environments differently. But it, it's just going to be all of a sudden there. It's going to be an excitement because of some global event, whatever that happens to be, and then everyone's just going to say, "Boom!" Right. I mean, not everybody, but a large percentage. I could say that maybe when that global 
connectivity happens, mm -hmm. you know, when high speed, low latency internet is given to the rest of the population, that we're gonna probably see an interesting spike in a lot of things, <laughs> especially wow. Bitcoin. Wow, yeah. very exciting. You know, you, you mentioned something uh, about uh, the technology, you know, the suppression of technology or whatever, like this, you know, this, this whole, um, uh, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is that when I'm watching, you know, the discussions around technology in general, uh, do you have the feeling like there's so much, so much emphasis on, you know, I love everything, you know, around technology, you know, but it's too much emphasis, I, whether it's Elon Musk or what is what's the other guy's name, Ben Gertzel, you know, all these guys that are into, like, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, uh, information technology, computer technology, and, you know, we see that. I mean, look at the smartphone, you know, it's, I get that, it's it's exponential, but what I'm, what I, what I'm, what I'm trying to ask sometimes is like, why have we never questioned you know the 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 stance you know the standstill of the other areas of technology would it be energy production of flight systems transportation technology energy conversion recycling whatever environmental technology i mean anything you can think of why <laughs> where is that well well it's there i mean i'm i'm working on water food and energy systems um i i, I got heavily involved in the seasteading efforts and I sat on those working groups specifically uh, because they are of interest to me. Um, my startup has a lot to do that. We're pushing sustainable food systems right now. We have, we have amazing patents on systems that will um, basically feed entire residences, high rise structures. I mean, produce food, fresh water, energy, fish, mushrooms, everything. It, it's all a big breathing, living engine. And once it started, it's, it, it just keeps going. So it, it's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are our goals. So there are people working on those type of um, fundamental technologies, right? The other ones do allow us to um, kind of, like I mentioned, fast track some of this stuff because now smart contracts, right? And we're, we can manage all this stuff through those type of things. And, uh, and manage the monetization through the tokenization of things, right? And so now everybody's attached through this and they're getting paid, their royalties are, are all being distributed evenly and, and fairly and, and fast and things to that effect. So, um, Which you could I, build, right? Which we could build on the layers of Bitcoin, like, you know, because oh, yeah, you know, I mean, we have the root, you know, we have the root. You we know, have the root, we have the foundation, if we were to use it as a foundation, right? right those roots in it, there is all these other texts that will benefit from it. So projects that are about food or water or energy, right? About sustainable projects like that, they'll utilize this tech as well. Because now what's the, it's about cutting out that middleman that's just skimming the fat, right? And then we just get after. So now we all have more resources to put back into our projects. And um, I think it's very, it's very important to have this. And we we're and we are utilizing it. We're we're a lot of projects are dealing in this, in in the in the uh, cryptocurrency space, right? And predominantly Bitcoin. So, um, I, I'm excited about it. I think that um, we are going to see, like I mentioned, the Starlink, but we'll see Hyperloop. We'll see drone taxis. We'll see all this interesting, all within the next. You know, I'm putting it out about. 10 years for sure, um, where now we can live anywhere we want, right? Yes. Uh, there's, yeah. there's no kind there's, there's yeah. no population. There's no overpopulation issues. bullshit, you know. I mean, it's all bullshit. It really, bullshit. really is. Right. It's I mean, all about transportation you, and, you know, it's all about transportation. Essential if anyone resources. that's flown somewhere and looked right. down or driven across a country anywhere, a bunch of open space everywhere, right? You're like, oh, you can't feed them. Not with existing systems, but we can feed them absolutely can feed them the math has already been done the structures and the technologies are in place they just need to be hybrid hybridized and implemented like so many other technologies and then there's not even an issue you can but that's exactly what i want to film that's exactly <clears throat> what i want to show the very first scenes do you think most people just don't have a hard time I mean, let alone like understanding, comprehending, you know, the possibilities, the real possibilities. It's not like some sci-fi utopian, you know, 
bullshit. It's like this is real, and we are not far. All the tech away. is available right now. <clears throat> right, and did you like? Did right you now. read Jeff Booth's book, like uh, the Price of Tomorrow? Why deflation is the key to an abundant future? I had, you know, also uh -huh. I, I brought him together with Titus Gebel of okay. of. Uh, of uh, oh yes, yes, yes. Free I private. saw the interview. I saw yeah. the interview. I've not read the it. It was a great yes, interview. Great. I unfortunately, yeah. I you know, uh, I had connectivity issues. So uh, thanks God, you know, uh, Stephanie. Uh, was, it, it was still smooth. It, it was, still worked yeah. out for well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know. And I'm, I'm like, do you think most people have a hard time imagining even that this is possible? That it's not like some, you know, f distant, far off thing, you know? It's oh, like, absolutely. Oh. They because this is one way that I, I've, I've, I've tried to explain it is that when people are in survival mode, they're not even utilizing yeah. all of their, their 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 processing power, right? So they simply are about like, right now, how do I do this? How do I feed myself? How do I support my family? That's it right they can't even have so i've had because i'm a futurist i'm an innovator like I, that's what i i just i live in that space you know people say you find peace when you, you're in the moment yeah that's not my peace <laughs> it, <laughs> my peace my peace is in the future and and I, they, they go well that's just that's you know that's not the way that. and i'm like okay <laughs> that's not your way but it's my way it gives me hope my the hope that these huge beautiful changes are going to happen and uh and then when i'm in my space my my current moment then it gives me peace knowing that i i live and operate in the future and i see beautiful things yeah right? so so um we're gonna make amazing changes all the technologies are here we're we're all i mean think about living in a home that provides all your water all your energy all your food right and and then and you your don't have and, to. and your clean environment on top of that like whatever yeah, that it's is, all sustainable you know all I mean you're re it's a closed yeah. loop system that's what yeah. we've been designing nothing goes out that that negatively impacts your environment yeah all of the technology exists it all just needs to be brought together packaged nicely made affordable and made available yeah right? so and we're getting there. We're, yeah. we're definitely getting there. Yeah. So we're, we're because you know, uh, Josh, my my first question was like, you know, I can imagine anything. You know, I, I, this is I have a very concrete visualization of of the trailer at least, just the first five or ten minutes. But my first concern was like, you know, are people gonna be able to handle that? Like, is that like, or are they gonna like? Oh no! This was like you know futuristic, you know utopian bullshit. I, like, yeah. and I have this concern. Like, like, but but on the other hand, you know, if we have like you know credible resources, like super interviews with credible people, like who are working, like literally working, like entrepreneurs, innovating, you know, like people like you, you know, like, um, it can bring somehow you know not only the emotional touch, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do with this visual with this film, but like yeah. If, they, if they're seeing something they cannot connect to, right, technologies that does, they don't feel are current, right, then there's no transition, there's no bridge for them, mm -hmm. right? So they're not going to cross. So the goal is to build the bridge. And the bridge is events that occur on a day to day right now that they can relate to, right, and show that situation improve just this much. Okay. Just improve this much, gotcha. right? Yeah, and they're like, oh, that's that's attainable. That's just like this much, right? It's going from a brick phone to a small smartphone. It's going from where where you know no one can afford this monstrous brick phone, right? From the '80s. <laughs> now everybody has this amazing <laughs> smartphone that just goes in their pocket and has all these apps, and it's you know it's like it it they wouldn't be able to see that. But we can help bridge that because we've seen it happen now and they've seen it happen. Most people alive have seen the crazy old phones and they've had those old technologies and now they know what they've come to. So we can communicate the same thing with Bitcoin and how on a day to day it will bring build that bridge for them. And then I would say that a lot more people will be able to visualize it because it's not so far fetched. It doesn't feel like sci fi at that point. You know? Yeah. So. It's it's so wonderful because you you pretty much describe everything that I had you know I tried to articulate in my article or in my communication with all. So I'm 
what I'm, I think what's really important, you said something about like, um, or I would describe it as uh, like the, the description or the visualization of, because about the question, how does the daily life of the average person gonna look like? You know, when we talk about deflationary technologies, like Jeff was talking about, like, what does it feel like? What is it? What does existence look like when people all of a sudden in this kind of society or in a free private city, whatever, citadel city, start like paying less and less for better, more innovative products, technologies, services? I mean, mm -hmm. what what would life be like? I, people can't even comprehend what it's like, not even our parents well, you, or grandparents. You gave me a vision right there, right? And the vision is a, a, a an impoverished person that was given a bit of a technology like a, a smartphone, right? An older version or whatever. And as they're walking through their dirt street, their shanty town, whatever it is, that is a large percentage of the population, unfortunately, right? Yeah. Um, and then they're making a purchase of something that everybody knows is expensive typically and that that particular person would not normally be able to purchase that, right? And you see them scan it for an amount of Bitcoin translated in the screen somehow to a dollar amount. They're like, there's no way it costs that, you know? Yeah. This, this, uh, you know, whatever people strive for, big screen TV or whatever, right? Yeah, I don't know what it is, right? That there's a poor person just doesn't get that type of thing, right? And you think they're poor and then you realize like, oh, everyone's transitioning. The community is culturally restructuring so you see them buying building materials, building materials, do, 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 do. you know, was this price? Now it's this price, boom. You know, water systems, pur purification systems, uh, gardening equipment, I don't, whatever. Whatever. Right? Where right. it was completely uh, unattainable for them. Right. right, especially but when now, you compare that to today's price or whatever, to since, market. or since 1971, you know, everything that has like actually it's been hyperinflationary, what we've been seeing, you know, in yeah. the last few decades, whatever that is, you know, education, housing, medical costs, uh, everything. I mean, even food, yeah. so everything, this, yeah, absolutely. But if you start showing those things, the prices people already know, they know what those things cost. And you're like, mm -hmm. wait a second, they're gonna. It can cost this much if these systems are implemented, and this is and this is the tool that is going. Bitcoin is one of those tools that are going to help it get there. Right. You know exactly. If that story can be told, then we've succeeded for sure. Yeah, and the story, uh, like once we once we people really understand, oh my God, this is really possible, then we can still go, you know, into the whatever you want to call it, the intellectual discussion, the mm -hmm. the comprehension process of you know central bank governments. Um, Inflation, hyperinflation, systematic theft, you know, which is perpetrated. I mean, it's, it's well, that it's stuff is to hold the attention of those that are already in the space, right? Yeah. So we, we have to play to the market. And the, the market is we have an audience of people that are informed and an audience of people that are not informed that are the majority. And we want that audience to be able to understand right. the true benefit because this audience that knows, they know it's going to help this one, this other audience. They know. But this, that bridge is what we really have to build to, to where we get, we are explaining to, to everyone, the overview, all of this, transition into the higher level, and then probably taper off with the overall benefit of what, it, what it's really doing. You know? Right. So um, uh, it, it, it can, and I believe it will be done. We, you have a great team. Um, you know, I don't know them all personally, no, but, um, super but I've looked at some of their work and yeah. I've, I've read through some of their, their visions for what it is. And I, I, I honestly believe that it can be done. It's simply now, like so many other things, just getting the resources in place, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think, I think this the, is, the talent, the talent yeah. is there for sure. Exactly. It's, it's getting the resources in place and, um, and the, the trailer is a huge component to that, right? Yeah. So uh, it, it is what can be used to market. It and um, and uh, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I got I got some I got some information out to some people in the industry. I did work at Disney for a little bit, so oh, cool. <laughs> um, I, I was in the animation department there for a little bit in operations, and uh, I'm hoping that I can kind of stir some 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 backup yeah. some backup assistance to some of our lead guys because it's it's a it's a it's a big task. You know, yeah, there's a there's a lot of moving parts to make a quality animation for sure. And um, and costly, and yeah. It's it, it's costly, but if you have a, a lot of sincere people that have the skill levels 
and uh, see the vision, mm -hmm. um, we might be able to get there for a lot less than what a, a normal, just full blown production would would cost if we were yeah. going the traditional. Method. You know, one of my so, best friends, she actually lives in Los in uh, near Beverly Hills or California, and and she she's really one of my longtime friends, and she's like super connected, you know. Also, like, like she she you know she uh, renovates and what they call restores and and designs, uh, you know, homes of billion billionaires and she's like she knows really super you know really ethical people too you know within because there's a lot of people who said goodbye to hollywood and they want to do their own thing so i'm you know i'm counting on those people so once we have something like a yeah. really quality high quality trailer or some kind of credible you know script and it's strong and effective you know it's really and emotionally translated and it's really good then i think we can all you know somehow get together and and get this thing going you know? Oh, absolutely. They'll see it. They'll see it. And, and you're right. A lot. There are there's a huge move away from these traditional systems into so many newer, more sustainable systems. Yeah. And, and, and people are opening up to these alternatives. Right. So um, it's not only just a feel good thing. Right. They, they really are like my my business partner. He says, the things we're doing are for our children's children's children. He always says that, and I, and he says it. And I'm like, I get it, man. I get it that we have to think generations ahead, right? We cannot just be like us and how it's going to benefit me and my immediate family right now. It's like if we can if we can have the visions and create models that are going to to give them the the foundation to to truly get to where we want to see like this beautiful almost paradisaic environment, yeah. right? Because we can do it. We've seen it in isolated places. The earth is beautiful and the technology we have, we can, we can implement restorative technologies, right? Yeah. Not even just sustainable. Like even that term, you'll see people now in the space, they're, they're not so much using sustainable as much as restorative. And I love that. Just that right there is huge. So they're going into a space and they're not like, well, we're not messing it up any further. Right, that's sustainable. <laughs> they, they're actually going in, not only not messing it up any further. They're improving it. They're bringing it back to its original state, and 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 creating a a thriving environment. Right. So we move out of this whole survival mentality, this whole just let's whatever it takes kind of mentality to to suck air and and continue on, and to let's thrive now. Let's Let's really, really get to a position where we can use all of our faculties because we're not stressed out, right? right? We're not we're not in fear because the system is keeping you and keep keeping us collectively in a state of fear so that we can't function, right? Yeah. So these type of projects um, are part of that whole collective of really helping readjust the psyche of the masses to have hope, right? And, and and that it's not 50 years from now, it's five years from now. Yeah, and you know, we come back to this, uh, to this, you know, uh, core issue of trust, because, um, you know, I always say, you know, hope is good, but but like having trust, like trusting, you know, in our own abilities, whatever skills, knowledge, wisdom, in our vision. And, you know, you talk about like, what do you want to call it? Like lowest, low time preference or lowest time preference as I'm becoming father. I mean, I've always been like that. I'm like visionary and always like long term, what can we achieve? But now that I'm becoming father now in December or something, I'm like, this is getting more, you know, stronger Huge. than ever, you know, like, Absolutely. like what kind of world, like what kind of planet, like what kind of environment do I want to, you know, leave behind? What kind of structures do I want to leave behind, you know, for our daughter? <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, we, we have all the tools and we're definitely going to get there. Oh. All right. So, um, Josh, I really enjoyed our talk. Let's just wrap this up. Uh, where can people you know, find more about you? What, uh, anything you know, want to tell about yourself? Sure. You missed? So the, the start that I had mentioned is it's, it's OU812, right? And uh, it's an interesting name that in my interpretation of it has to do with kind of consuming something that changes you. Right. So um, when you, you heard kind of a negative spin, you drank the Kool-Aid. Right. So w you consume something that's healthy for you 
and in that it's made a change it's had an impact on you so the the name was there and i pushed back a little bit on it but it, it, they, it's grown on me and and people are aligning to it so ultimately what it is is it's an innovation engine that is on contracts now traditional contracts but it's about pooling uh, intellectual property right mm -hmm. so so that we can compete with uh, corporations and goliaths and so if you look up OU812 um, that's what we do and we're we're just we're just in the you know startup funding phases right now and we've made some good traction we've partnered with some, some made some good strategic partnerships uh, to get us into the UAE and um, Africa and and a few other you know strategic areas so we have patents throughout global um, patents as well and we think that it's going to do some some real good to to and you know it's based on the open source as well it's kind of a different spin okay. on it it's a protect okay. it's a protected open source so it basically allows it for educational personal personal use all the technology is open for educational personal use it's just not allowing corporations to take advantage of exactly that's this is what you about know, you know our like, innovators not like the traditional patent system which is totally like insane. Well, it's, it's yeah. a hybrid and the goal of us yeah. is to eventually phase out the patent system as well yeah like we don't have any <laughs> issues with that it's just that is the model that exists right now and is accepted globally mm -hmm. in a lot of spaces right so once that is and you know that's another area where blockchain and 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 things like that type of technology can assist because then now it's validating all of those things. Mm -hmm. So you don't need the government component doing it through the patent system. We don't so need another, any government at all. <laughs> really, we really will not. So that's another bridge. So the bridge is protected open source and then phase out the, the traditional patent system and you know tr transition into our own system that we're building from scratch. So we have the hardware and we have the software and we're looking to develop that right now. So. Wow, so exciting. Josh, uh, we're gonna, you know, talk one to one another anyway in our group. So yeah. we'll be in touch. Thanks so much. This was really so be one of the most fascinating talks I've ever had because you've actually oh, expressed and articulated um, most of a, of what I've actually, you know, been trying to communicate, like or what I'm trying, you know, uh, to you know communicate my vision for yeah. for this project. Well, I always so say that the solution is in the discussion. So if we're not talking about it, we're not solving anything. <laughs> so, yes. that's, that's, that's what we're doing here <laughs> all right josh take care i'll see you soon take care bye bye okay bye bye wow this is this was like this is exactly what i've been uh, waiting for this this amazing talk with josh lopez he's an amazing uh, entrepreneur innovator uh, technologist uh creative uh, soul and mind so um yeah, um, if you want to join us in our group and you're, you know, you're, you, you deeply understand, you know, the essence, the potential, the vision of Bitcoin, uh, you know, in a more holistic uh, uh, sense, and, you know, you want to create a new civilization, whatever that is, free private cities, citadels, I mean, it's not some kind of dystopian bullshit as, you know, as, as, as we discussed. So... Uh, make sure you follow Josh Lopez uh, on LinkedIn for sure. I'm going to put up his, his website, but also make sure, please, that uh, you like, share, retweet, and subscribe. Follow me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, to my podcast platforms. Any positive review or, or rating uh, would be awesome. And yeah, if you want to contribute, if you want to support us in any shape or form, whether it be you know on a creative side or uh, sponsoring uh, or... Uh, you know, as a multiplicator or funding, or you have just, you know, experience within the, from within the film and movie industry, or it would be graphics, music, uh, you know, pre-production, post-production, get in touch with me, read my short article, a bit, uh, you know, human life rooted in Bitcoin, uh, which can, I can, you know, uh, uh, put this in the show notes again. So thanks so much for your support, for your open-mindedness, for your vision, for your, you know, for your really strong intentions. And I'll talk to you soon again. My name is Kevin Devan, the Total Connector, and have a 